So our lesson for uh, module 2 is the globalization of economy. The learning objectives for this particular discussion are the following. Define economic globalization. Identify who the actors and what are the drivers that facilitate economic globalization. Articulate a stance on global economic integration or express your point of view about economic globalization. What is economic globalization? So firstly, it is a historical process, the result of human innovation and technological progress. So we have understood that in module one, that indeed globalization is a historical process, how it originated and how it has come to be at present. Now, so there were three phases and then each phase happened in different periods of time. And then each phase is characterized by notable events no? like uh, discoveries and inventions brought about by uh, science and technology, a result of human innovation or changes, the ingenuity of human beings that came, they came up with uh, inventions with machines and uh, other discoveries also brought about by technological progress or so the advent of technology Increasing integration of econ economies around the world, particularly through the movement of goods, services, and capital across border. Okay, so we have also mentioned this in our definition of globalization. No? It is an increasing integration. More and more countries become interconnected with one another. There's also the acceleration of um, uh, activities economically, politically, socially. So acceleration is the strengthening once again. So increasing integration of economies around the world. More and more countries participate in terms of exchange of goods, services, and capital. So across countries means across uh, borders in different countries of the world. Movement of people or labor and knowledge or through technology across international borders as uh, uh, described by International Monetary Fund 2018. So economic globalization is also the movement of people. Now, so our laborers, our workers, our not only skilled workers, but even professionals, not doctors, nurses, teachers, also knowledge through technology across international borders so more and more countries are reached by uh, technology and uh, its other products economic globalization is the phenomenon uh, can thus uh, the phenomenon can thus have several interconnected dimensions or areas so what are these different interconnected dimensions of economic globalization so we have the globalization of trade of goods and services. So trade of goods and services in different countries. And um, moving a bit fast forward, I think you have already encountered this in your readings no? uh, of uh, Emmanuel Wallerstein's uh, uh, world systems theory. Okay, so the manufacturing of a certain product may involve several raw materials coming from different countries and then its manufacturing involves several countries as well. Also, its uh, production and marketing. So, globalization of trade of goods and services. Second, the globalization of financial and capital markets. Okay, so... Uh, finance and the capital is also moving you now from one country to another and then uh, the establishment of uh, multinational corporations transnational corporations global corporations that we will have as we go along with this discussion so globalization of finance and capital markets Economic globalization, the globalization of technology and communication. Okay, so even with this pandemic, for instance, because of technology, still education can continue or can go on. Although in the Philippines, this is our first, but in other countries such as U.S., Korea, and those which are already advanced in terms of technology, they have been doing online classes already a long time ago and the globalization of production so by globalization of production not only involving many countries more people technology machines okay glimpses from 
the global economy. What is a global market? So let us look at a few examples of this global market. One, the proliferation of the internet and the emergence of marketplaces like eBay. Okay, so kung sa local equivalent ang eBay will be Shopee, Lazada. Huh? Okay, and now uh, with this uh, pandemic, they're also trying to reach as many people in the world through uh, the internet. Okay, proliferation means the increase in number no, of the internet and emergence of marketplaces. So, uh, people although here in our country you no know, people still go to uh, the malls uh, the markets but uh, uh, it's becoming more popular that we shop online na lang, no? especially at this time when people are prohibited to go out of their homes okay so we order online then it is delivered to you you pay uh, cash on delivery okay so glimpses from the global economy another example would be trump shipping so trump shipping international shipping industry a certain market segment in which vessels that operate do not trade regularly between certain fixed ports okay so not certain fixed ports okay so it's not fixed in one particular place or port of a particular country only but several countries okay so furthermore Trump shipping is a shipping service where carriers contract to hold cargo in shipload lots between ports designated by charterer. So, Trump ships provide convenient, timely, and economic transportation for many goods needed in a complex industrial society. So, in established trades such as uh, grain from the USA, from Canada, Argentina, Australia, to Northern Europe, okay, so Mediterranean to Africa and South Asia, okay, so um, on new routes to alleviate temporary critical shortage, okay, so like, like for example, na? so grain coming from the United States that is traded to South Asian countries like uh, Kitaya, Southeast Asia, kita, South Asian countries, um, Afghanistan, Iran, those which are confronted by wars and conflict and people are uh, suffering from famine. Na? Okay, so loads of tons of these grains, for example, or other food products are transported there. Okay, so we have the market for foreign exchange is the largest market in the world in terms of turnover. Okay, so I think everyone is familiar with forex or foreign exchange. Na? And even among students or young professionals, they are also engaged in this. No, siempre kay negosyo may may risk man. No, but this has uh, been known to be the the fastest. No, in terms of turnover. No, in terms of profit. Okay, buying and selling of currency. Okay, that's forex or foreign exchange. So these are examples of global markets. So, globalization has been around since the 15th century when European exploration and colonization created global empires and markets. But most historians and economists agree that today is a special by the extent of interdependence and speed by which it has occurred. Okay, so going back to uh, history and origin of globalization, so that has been there 15th century. So, 15th century when European exploration and colonization started. Okay, so like for example, so 15, 1521, si Magellan nakaabot sa Philippines na. Okay, so because it was in this uh, 1500s, 1600 onwards that European countries in general started exploring outside the European continent and started colonizing countries na, and claimed the territory in the name of their king. Uh, that's for Spain. Spain has also colonized countries in South America in africa okay also the british now the great britain uh they were able to colonize south africa for example and they have ruled africa the first presidents uh, of the south africa were whites until the time of uh, nelson mandela who is the first black president of south africa na? 
Okay, so South America, no? so with the arrival of Christopher Columbus, he was Italian, but his uh, exploration was also in the name of Spain man. So Portugal and those countries that we mentioned in imperialism, no? Spain, Portugal, Britain, France, the Netherlands. So that could date back as early as 15th century. So, but most historians and economists agree that today, though at present, no, although globalization in as far as Philippines is concerned, Concern became popular no, about the year 2000 okay onwards no? so today is special by the extent of interdependence and speed by which it has occurred so interdependence between and among countries like more and more and more countries become involved so they are also being reached out by the uh, the, the bigger the stronger the rich countries but it doesn't uh, mean that it is equal no, or fair because uh, uh, some countries, now as you have encountered, I'm sure, as you were reading, core, semi periphery, and periphery are just simply providers of raw materials and cheap labor by the core or by the rich countries. Some of them are even just exploited. Na? Okay, so the drivers of globalization so two factors underlie globalization decline in barriers to the free flow of goods services and capital that has occurred since the end of world war two okay so one of the main factors underlying globalization is decline in barriers the breaking down of the barriers now so what does this further mean bigger countries started to break down the barriers in such a way that they have decided not to extend help no, economically to countries especially those devastated by war after world war ii so before world war ii countries especially the producing manufacturing countries were just confined within their own territory okay they mind their own business but after world war ii this was the time that they started not to help other countries and extend help so um economic the the economy or uh, production manufacturing is no longer centered in europe only or, or in western countries such as united states but uh, uh even smaller countries in different parts of the world and the second main driver of globalization is technological change so decline in the 1920s uh, during the 1920s rather and 30s many nations erected formidable barriers to international trade and foreign direct investment so formidable barriers to in the maguba no so they really protected their own no? um they established formidable barriers to international trade they were not so accepting of international trade na? so they were just focusing on what is uh, local or national within the country and also foreign direct investment so they were adamant they were hesitant then advanced industrial nations of the west committed themselves after world war ii to removing barriers to the free flow of goods, services, and capital between nations. So what are these uh, countries of the West? Of course, we have United States and we have European countries. So they belong to the Western Hemisphere. Those former colonizers also whose economies have already developed. No? So they started removing these barriers to the free flow of goods as well as of services and capital between nations so for european countries they started trading with neighboring european countries no? and then eventually with countries outside of their continent no? so for example so this shows average tariff tariff taxes no? rates on manufactured products so average tariff rates on manufactured products so just to show you know, the change 1913 1950 1990 2002 and then onwards no? but just to establish that indeed there was a change after world war ii so 1913 Okay, so wala pa na ganit World War One, nineteen thirteen, no, because World War One, nineteen fourteen to nineteen eighteen. So look at the percentage of uh, manufactured goods in different countries. So the highest would be United States, that's forty four percent, and then we have Japan, thirty percent, Germany and Sweden. Uh, no, France first, twenty one percent, Germany and Sweden, twenty percent, and then Italy, eighteen percent, United Kingdom, wala pa. So, 
that, that it only shows it did not involve in international trade yet okay so uh 1950s 1950 that was already after world war ii na? so uh world war ii in europe began 1939 then it ended 1940 1946 okay so 1950 a few years after world war ii what's the change na? Sino pinakataas? okay so uh we have germany na so germany 26 percent which germany is that now, kahit ang Germany after World War II, they were separated East and West. No? But in terms of progress, it's the West Germany. King East Germany was under communism no? until na-break ang Berlin Wall, 1997. Uh, na. Okay, so Germany 26% followed by Italy, France 18 then... Uh, USA, 14% na lang, USA. Then we have 9 for Sweden. UK is already there with 4% of the world's uh, uh, production. Average tariff rates on manufactured goods. Okay, those were the percentage imposed upon their manufactured goods no, coming from these countries. In Holland, 1%. Japan naman ang wala. Why is that so? Oh, remember, Japan was... Uh, Japan suffered uh, sanctions also after World War II because in terms of the Asia-Pacific na occupation nila, no, including that of the Philippines, so they were sanctioned uh, and they were also, of course, affected so much by the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki so wala da sila sa manufactured goods anay 1950s so 1990 and 2000 okay what's the trend moving on to uh, pag 1990 if you have noticed do pala na sila percentage na sa 5.9 5.3 4.4 okay and then 2000 so we have uh by the year 2000, what happened? Almost the same. Huh? Almost the same na. Okay. So, 4.0% na sila tanan except Japan, which is 3.8%. No average tariff rates on manufactured products. So, tariff again is taxes na imposed upon their manufactured products. Okay. So, uh, what is the implication of this? So, after World War II, indeed, no? so they have imposed smaller amount of taxes already for the products that they are producing and uh, uh, exporting to other countries. So, the effects of lowering trade barriers, the effects of lowering trade barriers. Okay, so what is the effect? So, uh, the blue line is the total merchandise exports. Okay, so from 1950, okay, it has reached uh, 2,600. Okay, then world production, the purple one. So, world production, one from 1950 up to uh, 2,000 has remained in 600. So, volume of world trade and world production from 1952. 2004 na siya. Okay. So, uh, manufacturing is no longer focused on one or a few countries only, but more countries become involved. Okay. And since uh, uh, there's uh, lower tariff imposed upon their manufactured products, more countries are able to afford na, to import these goods uh, that they are producing. Now we go to the role of technology. Okay, so the role of technology we have the lowering of trade barriers made globalization possible. So, why is that so? Because there is no more uh, prohibition no, from one country to trade with another because they have lowered the tariffs that they have imposed, no, the taxes that they have imposed. So more countries are becoming involved in manufacturing, production, import, export activities because of the lowering of trade 
barriers. Technology, on the other hand, has made it a transforming movement. So with the lowering of barriers, technology has made a transforming movement. The World Wide Web has exploded in the last 20 years. Computers can move money around the world or the so-called financial capital. We often see it in movies now. So banking subong is online na lang. You can check your your balance. You can even transfer funds. So hasta load sa cellphone is also online. So many things have happened because of technology so silicon valley is the ninth largest economy in the world so where is silicon valley so silicon valley i think is familiar with many of you so silicon valley is a region of san francisco peninsula in california where the miniature electronics industry is centered so called silicon because most of the devices built there are made of semiconductors such as silicon Okay, although sa SME ara mga Silicon Valley where you could buy your computer, mga computers, gadgets, and other paraphernalia, na? Okay, so earphones and uh, etc. Okay, so Silicon Valley is in San Francisco, California, United States. So it is the ninth largest economy in the world, Silicon Valley alone, na? So these are the various. Uh, uh, logos of uh, Silicon Valley, no? And then, damo ni sila mga subsidiary. So, Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley Bank, Digital Life. So, nag-evolve man yung iya nga signages. Okay. What else can be seen no, there? What else are present there in Silicon Valley? What companies are located in Silicon Valley? So, the biggest companies in Silicon Valley, Apple, Google. So, Apple is one of the most successful companies in the entire world and is headquartered in Cupertino, California. Okay, so, oh, I forgot to put the icon of uh, uh, Apple there, but okay. As the name itself suggests, Apple, nga may kagat, no? Nga may bite, okay? So, you have um, Google, which we are using, no? Very helpful to us and to the rest of the world, okay? So, then we have Facebook, which all of us are using as well, even those far-flung areas, basta may access na sa technology, may Facebook naman, no? Okay, so Wells Fargo, what is Wells Fargo? It is banking and finance, no? So, uh, the different branches all over the world. This is uh, the biggest na in terms of banking and finance, Visa, and Chevron. Okay, so Chevron is a, a company that is producing mga uh, petroleum and its byproducts. Na? So, petroleum, diesel, gasoline. Okay, so these are among the country the the rather the companies that are present in silicon valley how about internet usage although this needs to be updated no this needs to be updated okay so uh but this just shows us the trend na so japan in blue line pink or uh, purple united states yellow european monetary union and the world the philippines pula that no okay and perhaps you can even include their south korea mga microsecond lang ya bala ang ang uh, uh, it takes na microseconds to connect to the internet okay so pero philippines is text capital of the world no wala kita da sa among the fastest in terms of internet connectivity even in the way we we hold our online classes si medyo nagaka problema pa kita ya okay but then this only goes to show uh, internet usage all over the world no? how useful internet is for many people in different parts of the world globalization is acceleration of trends of the last 10,000 years so if you're going to ask ourselves is globalization new or old okay with this discussion it gives us the idea globalization is old it may not have been called globalization before but it's been there a long time ago 
So people lived for 250,000 years in hunter-gatherer bands. So these were the nomadic societies. No? Okay, then the rise of agriculture when these uh, tribes decided to irrigate, no? irrigate the land by constructing irrigation ditches to facilitate the flow of water from rivers to their plantation. Okay, so 10,000 years ago led to the rise of empires and nation-states. Okay, so empires, how were empires built? So from one kingdom conquered by another and then fusing or merging these kingdoms, they established empires. And going back to our discussion of imperialism, European countries started conquering territories outside of Europe and claimed it as part of their own. No? Claimed it in the name of their king and then made it their own, exploiting, exploring the resources of these countries including its people so and the rise of nation states okay so um nation state is because many of these countries who were conquered or colonized also decided eventually to fight or to have revolutions in order to establish an independent state so science and enlightenment after 1600 produced global trade and empires the so-called age of enlightenment or the age of reason no? enlightenment period so that's the time of the enlightened thinkers or philosophers no? so enlightenment is also the period in world history wherein people no longer solely relied on the bible as the source of truth and uh, on religion that if something cannot be explained attribute it to faith or to those who don't believe attribute it to magic uh, but enlightenment is the age of reason you know, the time of our philosophers and thinkers that uh, came up with all these philosophies about economy about how people should live their lives no? uh, dependent no? independently from from religion okay so produce global trade and empires so uh, with um, with the uh, trade companies that uh, they had such as the Dutch East India Company the British East India Company okay so they search for spices because the spice was the most profitable trade at that time way back in the 15th 16th century Okay, free trade and technology after 1945 produced present-day globalization. So this also uh, brings us back to how globalization came to be. So free trade with the breaking of the barriers after World War II and technology after 1945. So that's after World War II still produced the present-day globalization. And it is a continuing process. No? So as we can see, we can observe, we can feel so it is continuing to, to happen and we can also uh, feel and be benefited by these developments. So uh, economic globalization, the early capitalist ideas, the factors behind economic globalization. No? So it could be traced back from the early capitalist ideas of Adam Smith. So Adam Smith, whose popular masterpiece was the book, entitled the wealth of nations so the wealth of nations beginning of the industrial revolution okay so the capitalist who was the enemy of karl marx no because karl marx hates capitalism okay so the early capitalist ideas of the free market quote unquote by adam smith in his book the wealth of nations 1776 market is free free quote unquote from state control what does this mean so uh, Adam Smith is the proponent of lazy fare. Na? Okay, so perhaps you have encountered that French term, uh, lazy fare, but it's lazy fare or free market or free enterprise. Na? So, what does that further mean? Market left alone by government no? without so much restriction from government could lead you know, to the wealth of nations. Okay, that is the free market economy. So, without control from government, without so much restrictions from government, okay, can lead to wealth of nations. But eventually, well, this really did not apply to all, na? okay, uh, because there have 
been abuses na eventually in terms of free market while in some other countries it is a controlled economy the opposite of free e- market economy is controlled economy such as that of China no? that government that government has a say in almost everything even in producing goods and services and the factories or the means of producing goods and services is state owned or government owned man okay so division of labor okay so division of labor what is division of labor uh, this concept of division of labor has also uh, paved the way for economic globalization that people uh, have specific tasks no? such as in a shoe manufacturing for instance it used to be that one person creates the shoe from the sole to the body or to the ornaments yada. but then with division of labor though, though by sector na, no? or by department na no or dirita nan suelas tong tong sapatos dirita nan ang iya nga lawas ang sapatos dirita nan shoelace or buttons that's division of labor Ah, okay, so that's just in the shoe industry. It could apply to many other businesses or industries. So division of labor, even at home, my division of labor, no? Sino mga ugas, mga laba, matig ang, okay, division of labor, dividing the task to people, okay? For what purpose? For more efficient, no? Production. Then, there's also economic competition so economic competition so from the point of view of adam smith positive ni siya yeah, no? because competition could lead to development yapon but no gin kontra man siya ni marx siya nga capitalism na no? in his uh, communist manifesto na compet- uh, competition niya kuno ya uh, economic competition uh, is uh, devoid or wala bala sang human uh, touch na no? everything seems to be functional the way people relate with one another is just simply by competition na okay so example wherever you would see McDonald's across the street is Jollibee or vice versa okay but then uh, Jollibee has also bought what other competitors in terms of fast food chain no? yung bakal yung ano gani mang inasal yung, iya naman ang chowking greenet yung mga things like that no? that's why in city mall amo lang nang makita mukha isa lang nakatag iya all in different names lang na okay so uh, competition on the other hand for for uh, Adam Smith is positive okay but for uh for Karl Marx later on in communism that is just um economic competition uh, wala sang personal touch between and among people na everything is uh, driven by competition such as at home pa in this indies no sinong gwapa sinong alam okay kung sa eskwelahan sinong sinong pala recite sinong ipuson okay but syempre hindi mo tamo sinong sinong mango sinong hindi mo kay eskwela gani okay sige so we have economic globalization today so economies are increasingly linked together examples are nafta so economies are increasingly linked together with the breaking of the barriers countries establishing interconnections with one another okay international organizations were also established to help each member country economically uh, so the basic motivation is for economic development of member countries so dala naman na dang political social cultural but mostly for economic development of member countries we have the nafta north african free uh, north american free trade agreement now mexico uh, canada usa the eu is the european union wto world trade organization so the pictures you can see at the center are those of the World Trade Organization. Na? So, while well, they're having their meetings, okay, so this is the logo outside and this is the main building. So, only global World Trade Organization or the WTO is the only global international organization dealing with the rules of trade between nations. So, its goal is to help producers of goods and services, exporters and importers, conduct their business okay so more and more countries become members of the wto uh 
China, for example. So it used to be non hindi siya member of the WTO. But in when was that? 1997, when Hong Kong was finally returned by the British government to the Chinese government, nagjoin man ang China sa WTO. So that is why Chinese products is spread no all throughout the world. Ang joke kani yung kis abala that your package or instance no from the United States no halin sa relative or parents from the US pag tanaw mo made in China pero halin na sa US ang package na. So that's one proof of how World Trade Organization works na. So products coming from different countries are also circulated in various countries of the world. Then we have multinational corporations. So multinational corporations, the old Dutch East India Company, I mentioned that earlier. Okay, 1602, the company of the Dutch merchants. Where are the Dutch coming from? They're from the Netherlands. And Netherlands is one of the richest na, countries in the world. Okay, so it is second in terms of uh, food sufficiency. Na, and then food sufficient sila in ablang to the next years, next 50 years, hindi na sila magutuman because they are self-sufficient in terms of food, more than enough for their own people. Okay, pero actually number one is Singapore, no? It's just that Singapore is reliant mostly on imports. Kahit gamay lang areas ang Singapore, no? They are not the ones producing what they eat, what they use mostly. Okay, back to Dutch East India Company of the Netherlands. So, Dutch merchants and independent trading companies as early as 1602, they have spread, no? So, to different parts of the world to trade. So, the spice trade monopoly in East Asia, I mentioned that earlier as well. One of the main motivations why European countries such as the Netherlands sent exploration outside the European continent through these big ships no, was because of the spice trade. And where are spices abundant? Spices are abundant in in Asia. Where is the spice island known as Moluccas? That's in Indonesia. No? That is also where Ferdinand Magellan's expedition was supposed to be heading. But because of uh, uh, the bad weather, no? okay? and also because of mutiny of some of the people in the ships, okay, wala. it was really because of a bad weather, you know, the storm that changed the route of their ship. They sila napadpad sa Pilipinas. Okay, so... Spain and Portugal alike, since they were the first two of the two Portugal, gidang una, the motivation was to search for spices. So that's to add flavor to uh, the food, no European food, and these were abundant in the Asian continent. So Moluccas in India, spices are also uh, abundant in uh, in Indonesia. Rather, Moluccas is in Indonesia. Spices are also abundant in India, na. Okay, that's why ang curry influence na sa India sa aton. Power to colonize territories and enslave indigenous people. Okay, so with these uh, companies, the British East India Company is another. So the British East India Company, of course, was from Great Britain. When they arrived in India, the purpose was just to trade. Eventually, it paved the way for the colonization of India by the British. Okay. So, dudungan-dungan lang kita na, na independent, 1946 man ta na independent from the Japanese, 1946 man na independent ang India sa Great Britain. And maybe you are familiar with Mohandas Gandhi or Mahatma Gandhi. Na? Okay. So, he became popular during the British colonization of India. So, paving the way for its independence. Galing kahit napatay man siya, na? gin-assassinate siya sa Hindu fanatic. Okay. So, Dutch East India Company, British East India Company, these were examples of multinational corporations at that time, 15th, 16th century. Na? So, Indonesia and South Africa, I made mention of Indonesia as where the Spice Island, Moluccas or Malacca is located. Na? And then, South African countries, uh, South Africa, na? a country in the African continent, these are places where uh, spices are abundant, even salt. Oh, in South Africa, may salt mine. Mapati ka mga sa, sa South Africa, may minahan sang salt, no? Okay. And then, even in the in the earlier times, pagid, no? Mga ancient times pa na, they traded salt with gold, no? Imagine, gold by Loasin. 
Okay, so economic globalization, multinational corporations, any business with productive activities in two or more countries. Na? So, uh, what is a multinational corporation? It is any business with productive activities in two or more countries. What are examples of multinational corporations? We have Nike, Walmart, okay, though. Uh, grocery store man siya no do ka SNR man okay so uh, uh, always low prices okay so we have their um, Royal Dutch or Royal or Dutch Shell okay so uh, we have Shell in the Philippines Okay, so what are its other competitors? Uh, Petron, Caltex, tapos may mga local na no, Jetty, Sea Oil. Okay, so but uh, Royal Shell, uh, by the way, uh, speaking of Royal Shell, there was really a study conducted no about its uh, ang iya balang nga pagka pure that there are no other elements that can destroy engine ko no, no sa test naging conduct siya lang na iya ang nakapasar. Okay, so do, do ka quality assurance test bala na to the petroleum products of Royal Shell. Okay, so top 100 multinationals are all US owned companies. So this is why, of course, United States still remain to be number one na, in terms of a trading partner uh, of many countries, of most countries in the world. Okay, so in terms of economy, number one gyapo ng USA. I don't know after this pandemic kung number one man sa gyapo, no? So kung tuod, did man ang conspiracy theory nga ginungod din isang China create ang ang virus no, to destroy the economy of the US na competitor ya because it used to be US before, number one, number two is Japan. Okay, but over the years, number two na ang China. So... I don't know if it is true that its goal is really to be number one, no? And oust in the number one slot, USA. Okay, but we don't know. It could be true. Okay, going back, top 100 multinational companies no, in the world are owned by USA. So, Royal Dutch Shell, Global Group of Energy, and Petrochemical Companies operating in more than 140 countries and territories. So, imagine. And within that country, pila bala ang iya nga mga branches, na? Okay, pila kabilog ang naga franchise within one country uh, alone. So, 140 countries and territories employing more than 112,000 people. Okay, so the positive side of it, because it's spread worldwide no, in 140 countries and territories, it is also one of the biggest employers. So, employing 112,000 or even more no, employees. Furthermore, how do global corporations function? Okay, so the contemporary global corporation is simultaneously and commonly referred to either as multinational corporation or MNC, a transnational corporation, TNC, an international company or a global company. So, these are the synonyms to global corporations. Na? So, contemporary, present, global corporations can be called in these names. So, global corporation, multinational corporation, transnational corporation, international corporation or company. Okay. But we will specify each one of them. So we have international companies. What are intern? I sorry. International companies are importers and exporters, typically without investment outside of their home country. Okay, you can see the examples there: Sony, BBC, Facebook, LinkedIn, Walt Disney, Uber, Twitter, ASOS, okay, Forbes, Tumblr. Okay, international companies, they are engaged in imports and exports, but they have no investment outside of their home country. So, if these are within USA, they just import and export, but the operations is just within USA. Then we have, how do global corporations function in the uh, aspect of or in the case rather of multinational companies so multinational companies have investments in other countries but do not have coordinated product 
offerings in each country, they are more focused on adapting their products and services to each individual market. Okay, so going back to our discussion in module 1, multinational corporations are the ones which are mostly engaged in globalization. They are foreign owned but they customize their products according to the needs of their local clients. So, again, they have investment in other countries but do not have coordinated product offerings in each country. Their product offering depends on the needs of the country in which they are present. Now, we cited example of McDo last time. So, McDo in uh, the U.S. wala sila rice meals but when they came here to the Philippines, they offered rice meals, no rice and chicken, Okay, also palabok, hindi mo natin staple sa US na. Okay, and then in Japan, they have that sakura drink, no, wala man diya sa aton. Okay, so they are more focused on adapting their products and services to each individual local market. Then we have global companies, on the other hand, have invested in and are present in many Countries, they typically market their products and services to each individual local market. So, they have invested in and are present in many countries. So, they typically market their products and services to each individual local market. So, they are engaged in both localization and the uh, products no, that are produced within their country. Okay, so... That these are also present in the countries with, where they have investments. So you can see there, Hyatt, Burger King, CNN, Sara Lee, Texco, Sports Illustrated, Procter & Gamble for PNG, HP, Hewitt Packard, na, okay, that's brand of our laptops, Microsoft, FedEx, okay, so those are examples of global companies. Then we have transnational companies so transnational are more complex organizations why complex in which they have invested in foreign operations but have a central corporate facility but give decision making research and development or R&D and marketing powers to each individual foreign market okay so among the four types of global companies, so transnational is what? Is complex. So, complex organization. They have invested in foreign operations, but they have a central corporate facility. Okay? The central corporate facility is within these countries in which they are present. And they are empowering these investments, now this, this, uh, or shall we use the term branch, no? Okay? In the Philippines. Okay? To have decision-making power, research and development, how to make their products even better, no? to innovate some more, to make it more successful and uh, attractive to the customers, okay, and marketing powers to each individual foreign market. So, kumbaga, decentralized ang yaya nga decision-making. Wherever these countries are present, they give no decision-making power, research and development, and marketing powers to this individual foreign market where they are. So, we have CNN, Adobe, Fox, AWOL. AWOL is America Online. No? So, sa so wala pa ni mga uh, Google, Yahoo, uh, we used to send emails, no? in early 2000, we used to send emails to AOL, that's America Online, Wired, Google, USA Today, Cognizant, Lenovo, Marriott, Dell, uh, is also a computer brand, no? okay, Pepsi, Brocade, IBG, Nickelodeon, Kawasaki, Sony, those are examples of transnational companies. Now we have Global, a globalization of production of goods and services. So, earlier it was said no, that economic globalization is also the globalization of production of goods and services. So, one example is, so the Visio Flat Panel TV. So, Visio Flat Panel TV is designed in a small office in California, USA, but it is assembled in Mexico. Then, from panels made in South Korea, electronic components made in China, microprocessors made in the U 
USA. Okay, so as you can see, there is proof of globalization of production of goods and services, no? of goods niya, particularly the VCO flat. TV. What are the countries involved here? So we have USA, Mexico, South Korea, China. One particular product but many countries are involved in its manufacturing and production. Now, so this will help you further answer your uh, table there. Huh? So you are asked, your mind map rather, your mind map that you are asked to uh, think, choose one product. And then, what is the foreign brand of your product? That should be the center of your mind map, no? Tapos ma-branch out siya, no? Magamot-gamot siya, okay? In terms of what are the raw materials? Where do these raw materials come from? What are the countries involved in production, in manufacturing? And in what countries are they marketed? Okay, so this is one concrete example of globalization of goods. For services, globalization of services, increasingly companies are using modern communications to outsource service activities to locals, nations. I think everybody is familiar with BPOs, business process outsourcing or in layman's term we call them call centers okay so perhaps you have relatives who are working in call centers no tapos they are working during wee hours na mga unholy hours like kaagahon so it's because the company they're working in is us owned so ang gabi di sa tun adlaw to sa ila okay so more and more countries na increasing companies are using modern communications to outsource so business process outsourcing bpos call centers to locals nation so what does this mean so more of these companies are choosing countries wherein they pay lower wages to workers or employer uh, to employees okay such as what such as india and china oh my pagaling philippines no i think if you know some relatives are working in call centers bisan nurse pa ang nagraduate tanyo nursing pa registered nurse kisa iban engineer man pero after graduation kun hindi pa sila ma hire gidya in their specific professions they work as call center agents nagkalingaw na sila after all the pay is attractive no okay for example customer service calls are routed to india so we already know that china and india have the highest china with first and second is india in terms of highest population no? and then compared to other nationalities even to filipinos mas lower paying na sila no? their services are lower paying even our ofw domestic helpers i have uh, i have uh, encountered a few uh, sa Hong Kong man, you know, Hong Kong employers, not all of them are Chinese though, iba may mga puti man no, or mga British or Americans, employers in Hong Kong, they are cautious of hiring Filipino or Filipina uh, mga OFWs or domestic helpers because Filipinas are are uh, more assertive, na? Kaya usually ba lang, nagalakat mga ginato yung mga naka-eskwila man ba lang, no? even professionals, Okay, but in search for greener pasture, they just leave the country and go there para mas dako ang kitaon. Now, so, we are assertive na in terms of kung pilang swildo, dapat amugid na, kung may leave or the benefits, like that na. But for Chinese and Indians mostly, okay, they are low paying, kag less likely man na sila yabi na nagareklamo. Na? Alright, so these two are examples of globalization of goods in the case of Visio Flat TV and then the business process outsourcing. Uh, so foreign owned okay, or owned by other countries but then the workers or the service providers such as the call center agents are coming from other countries man, not really their own. Uh, so globalization of markets in the globalization of markets in the past each country had its own companies in many industries and its own products so we established that already now before world war ii when countries established formidable barriers develop within their own country but then after world war ii when they started to break down these barriers more countries became involved in production in manufacturing in production and in marketing so uh, 
the example here now this is from the author of uh, the book now of the discussion globalization 101 now, in his case he said i never saw japanese media and i saw little non-us media in college okay because perhaps during his time though he's just confined within uh, united states now now or today everyone knows nintendo starbucks coca-cola ikea ikea is uh, producing furniture now mcdonald's samsung while well, the rest of the others you're familiar with them okay so these are proofs of globalization of market now speaking of people na not having idea what's happening outside the mga north koreans na yeah na still they are confined within their own country why is that so they are prohibited to know what's happening outside and they don't have access to the media na to television to cell phone the internet iya lang may isang president no and his family and relatives but common south north korean people because they're also under communist regime king jong kim jong un okay so restricted lang na sila sa Japan, no with what's happening just within north korea okay and they are also just limited to products of north korea they don't get to use to buy to eat products coming from other countries okay gina promote na nila yung self sufficiency Okay, things they use, shoes, a shirt, etc. Tanan made from uh, North Korea. They just copy in mga examples of mga designs ng shoes. Be for example, no? Pero ang nila ginagamit, ang ginaproduce lang yun yun nila. Then we have the growth of regional trading alliances, a shared political and economic interest to promote trade. Okay, so earlier we have mentioned NAFTA, na? Okay, so more countries become interconnected with one another. So as a result, more international organizations were also established to share political and economic interests as well as to promote trade with one another. So we have the following, the ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Philippines is one of the founding members of the ASEAN. There were five, na? Okay, so 1967, the EC or the European Community, 1967, European Union, 1993, uh, NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement, 1994. We have the AEC, African Economic Community. Kung may EU, may AU, manalipat ko din mo sulat si Ara, siya gali, oh, okay. More recent ones are APEC, Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation, 1989. And in several occasions, Philippines has become a host no, of APEC Summit. AU is African Union in 2002. If the purpose of the European Union is is to help no, develop the economy of European countries, which are its members. It's the same purpose of the African Union. Now, and talking about Africa, African countries are the ones now are said to be the ones fueling the European economy. Okay. So, EAEU, Eurasian Economic Union in 2015. Ano niyang Eurasia, Gani? This is Europe and Asia. What are countries belonging to Eurasia? Ang mga tanta, nabala Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Russia is also part of it, Georgia. Okay, ang ga-dominate naman na diya in the EAEU is Russia, Vladimir Putin. Okay, so these are examples of international organizations promoting political economic and trade interest of the member countries briefly lang european union began in 1957 with six nations now 27 intended to integrate the european economy and they came up with a common currency which is the euro now there was a time that the euro has the highest value in terms of conversion to pesos no and then later on if i'm not mistaken adequated dinar na okay bas higher ni siyang euro sa sa US dollar okay but i think uh, somehow we have an idea also no you have an idea that uh, one of the founding members that is United Kingdom of Great Britain has exited na European Union or the so called Brexit tapos nagbalik siya sa iya yang uh, currency which is the sterling pound so brexit brexit united kingdom of great britain and northern ireland also known as uk formally withdrew from the european union in march 2017 
Its currency, the sterling pound, now has a higher value than the euro and the US dollar in terms of peso exchange. Okay. So, why is that so? They decided, no? Kahit ang yung United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland na apat na siya ka territory. That's England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Portion lang sang Ireland, which is in the north, no? Kaya may separate country man niya nga Independent Republic of Ireland. So, realizing that they have to divide their resources pagitbala with other members of the European Union, they started to go back to the basics. Unahon, anay nila, ila naman nga mga tao, no? So, coming from these four different territories, okay, so, they decided to withdraw from the European Union. So, uh, pound is 66, euro is 56, US dollar is 51. This was last year. This was last year. No, I don't know with the pandemic ko ano na ay, ang, ang equivalent kag which one is higher na. Okay. So, the changing roles of countries in the global economy. 1960, US dominated the world economy and world trade picture. Okay, so that was just a few years after World War II. Na? So, U.S. dominated world economy and the world trade picture. U.S. multinationals dominated the international business scene, the whole United States gave ang dominant. About half the world, the centrally planned economies of the communist world was off limits to Western international business. Okay, so this was during the Cold War, no? Ano ng Cold War, yeah? That was uh, a competition between ideology, communism, and democracy okay so uh u.s and then western international business was off limits to the communist contra nila okay contra sila not not personally though but be, because of their ideologies no tanan nga mga pro-democracy gina support sang u.s tanan nga mga communist Okay, so enemy Manila, and then these communist countries naman niya were supported by the competitor of USA, which is the Soviet Union or the USSR, China, Russia. Okay, but then eventually some of these communists have also transformed into or transitioned into democratic countries. Ano na lang ang nabilin? China, North Korea, Cuba, and South America. Okay. So, uh, na, na dismantle naman ang Soviet Union. Okay, Russia used to be the dominant member, still dominant man siya subong, pero hindi na siya communist. Okay, so today, much of this has changed. In the early 1960s, the U.S. was the world's dominant industrial power, accounting for about 40.3% of the world manufacturing output. That was in the 1960s, dominated by the United States. By year 2000 onward, so starting the year 2000, U.S. accounted for only 20.7% of this manufacturing output. Okay, so meaning to say, hindi na US ang dominant gid, but other countries have also joined na in terms of world manufacturing output. Some of the products are coming from other countries already and not all from the USA. Other developed nations experience a similar decline. Okay, so it's an exchange of decline and then increase. Okay, so but... Uh, the fact is, more and more countries have become involved in terms of world production and manufacturing output by 2007 onwards. How about Africa? African countries, the economic globalization in Africa. So, little industry and technology in Africa. That's a sad reality. Na? In some other countries like South Africa, which was colonized by the British, damo manada sila mga industries. Na? Okay, pero hindi gidi Japan enough na for, the, for their, their own people as these are dominated by only a few whites mostly. Na? So, little industry and technology, still many African countries are tribal no, in nature and we have uh, seen that oh, personal, for example, mo siling kagani nga poverty, pag search mo sa internet poverty, it would readily give you pictures of black people, black children okay, so Africa is said to be very rich in terms of natural resources however, their governments still lack no, this 
these funds to exploit and explore their resources for their own people. Kung may mga industry and technolo technology man gin, hindi man Africans ang benefited. Ha? But it's more of the white people who are already there, who colonized them and are indeed uh, living permanently in these African countries. Can economic globalization help reduce poverty? What do you think? Yes, no? but still it is a long continuing process of answering poverty particularly in Africa. As I was saying just a while ago, mga malnutrition, search bala, mga illnesses and diseases, but internet would right away give you African children, African people. Na? Okay, I've even seen one video in YouTube, no? Wala na gin sila pagkaon, abi mo ano nila ginimo. They usually, they are using a uh, grain, no? Corn, nagina pound nila, okay, or wheat, or barley, okay, or millet, uh, mga, mga variety na sila sa mga cereals, no? Okay, ipound nila, pero kahit idutay lang, ginaimpunan, mud, and they're eating mud cookies. Oh my gosh, gakaon sila sang daga o lutak, no? Duta na iya, yeah. but that's one of the realities there, na? Okay, what is brain drain? Miss, tama na na, miss na drain, na miss na nga mo na brain. Okay, brain drain is a phenomenon in which... What? Skilled workers and professionals of one country are leaving and going to others. For what reason? For greener pasture or for much higher paying jobs wherein they can support their families. Kung sa Dribla sa Philippines may kanta na nga napakaraming guro dito sa atin. Ngunit bakit parang wala nang natira? nag abroad sila. Okay? Engineer, nurses, that's brain drain. Uh, so, instead of serving their own country and their own people because they cannot survive, okay, because of conflict, because the economy is low, because their governments are inefficient, they go to other countries to work and to receive much higher paying jobs. That's brain drain. Okay, debt, in terms of debt, debt is utang, na? so IMF. So, International Monetary Fund loans, African countries can't even pay back interest, no? Because sad sang plight ka Africans, no? So, they can't even pay back interest. Kita sa Philippines, so, siyempre may utang man ta, na? Especially na globo siya sa Marcos time. And, um, ang muna blang na sila nila nga, wala ka pa na tawo, ara ka pa lang sa tiyan ni nanay mo, may utang ka na. It's because of the foreign debt also of Philippines with IMF, na International Monetary Fund and World Bank. Okay. Pero sa Philippines, kahit pa paano, makabayad pa ta interest. We are not even able to pay the principal as well, no? Only the interest. Okay, but for Africans, they can't even pay this interest. So, 300 million people live on less than $1 a day. So, pilang equivalent sa $1 sa Philippines, 50 pesos. It, you can just imagine, 300 million people in Africa live uh, on less than 50 pesos a day. 40%, uh, 48% of people in Sub-Saharan Africa are in extreme poverty and less than 750 calories per day. So, pilagan yung calories required to perform a day's work. That's 1,000 calories. Sila yung less than 750 pagid na. Okay. It is less likely that we can see Africans ng mga tambok or mga lagko lawas, no? Most of them are mga skinny, mga niwang, mabutud ang chan. Okay. It's because they are deprived of proper food and nutrition. 2001 index for foreign investment in Africa was zero. What does that mean? In terms of economy, so that's uh, index for foreign investment zero and the gap between rich and the poor is increasing okay so uh, there are also efforts to extend globalization in Africa but you know it is confronted mostly by protests and rallies of the people huh? okay moving on here last few more slides before we end making globalization work for Africa there you can see the protesters africa is not for sale our world is not for sale the gender and trade network in africa putting women and men first not profit you see so uh, they're trying to make globalization work in africa but what 
it is at the expense of the people. So profit is more no, aimed rather than the welfare of the men and women. Ila resources, sila ang nag but who owns mostly these companies? It's the foreign countries. Okay, and then in the second picture, do ka factory man siya, do fabric, no, or clothing. Okay, so ting ila ba lang working condition, hindi man ang musin na kanami, no? Okay, so, uh, and we don't know if they have lunch break man or they have other benefits. This one is the transportation sector. Okay, so making globalization work in Africa in terms of transportation, it's a work in progress also. And then, see, looking at how these vehicles look like, though, Palario Tanantura Nila, so we could presume it's owned by one company only. Okay, wala competition. In that case, ti, pagusto na sila pa sa kapliti eh, kung wala competition, na, kung wala sang competing companies, kag sila lang ga-monopolize. In this picture, uh, 12.500 uh, OR, pack your bags, and leave the country. Viva, gold, viva. Okay, so they are receiving very meager pay as well, very meager salary or pay for a hard work. Okay, so they are protesting. Um, global problems? Global problems are still evident. Economic inequities and labor servitude are still uh, very much evident. So, despite the promises of globalization, it cannot be denied that these problems are still existing. Huh? So, we have uh, uh, causes of poverty, resource distribution, and access. So, income opportunities are limited. So, resource distribution and access. Not all people have access to the resources even of their own country. No? And resources are not equally distributed. There is the issue of equality and equity in terms of resource distribution. Some have plenty, some have few, some don't have. No? Okay. So, economic opportunities are also limited. So, we are talking about worldwide scope. Huh? Okay. So, economic opportunities are limited. There are those with so much opportunities available for them, but for some others, they are deprived of it. Education opportunities are limited as well. So, forced labor. What is forced labor? Okay. May be characterized by slavery and child labor. So, slavery still exists. It may not be the slavery of the Africans before that they were treated like animals. Ginagapo sila gaoba lang, ginagapo sang chain ilang mga kamot, nabusalan ilang mga baba. No? But there could be modern forms of slavery still existing at present. And we have child labor is still common. Okay? So, that is what we call labor servitude. No? Magsiling kagani, ba nga involuntary servitude, for example. So, uh, involuntary service should a person is compelled no, uh, to render service especially without pay meaning you force a person to work no, even if it is against his or her will okay so these are the examples of these um, problems worldwide no, uh, in terms of economic globalization unequal resource distribution Nga, ang nga may nagakagutman, iba niya overflowing ang ilang nga pagkaon, okay. Even in fast food chains, for instance, maging kagatan lang gamay, ibilin, no? There is so much food wastage, but look at this, they are hungry, okay? So, uh, we have even seen sa Philippines ng batsoy nga ginatawag, ang mga gintang tira-tira, balang na pangwahalin sa fast food chain, tapos ginainit lang nila, kaginaluto, liwat. Okay, pero actually, Ano na eh, ng salin na, no? Okay. So, an even effect, the effect of an even distribution of resources. So, you can see their containers are empty, gapila, para sa rasyon, ang tubig, the same, na And then, we can see black people again here because indeed, no water is one of the, uh, is one of uh, the main problems of uh, of African people na potable drinking water ang okay, kaginaprovidan pa sila sang truck and then uh, here comes another one ay kasubo man nagiinom sa tubig sa sa pipe nga ingi and then ang palibot ya yeah, as we can see so very dirty na an equal resource distribution 
limited income opportunities. Okay. So, limited income opportunities. As we can see, but hindi gidya balance na. Ario ang mga meager income lang. Ma pigado. Maka-survive man. But then, look at the other one who has a lot of bags of money. The same with this one. We want change. Change is needed. So, this is pertaining to na lang politics na. Okay. Usually, it is the hope of the people that when election comes, they will vote for somebody who can meet their needs or answer their their needs economically, like provide job opportunities, look after the welfare, change, change, at yung change, literal, sinsilyo, na? Okay, here. And I think you could also, in, in, in the Philippines, you can also observe that, na, ang kada election na lang, ha, permi lang ginaya, bukang bibig, ang kahirapan, edukasyon, Okay, the soon pagblaga nila after 3 years, 6 years, di na sabat man ang kahirapan. Ano na bala na? Okay, so an equal limited income opportunities. Top 1% controls 46% of the world's world's wealth. Okay, okay. Ito hindi mo sa masyado gahaman, no? Only 1% controls 46% of the world's wealth. Yet, in this illustration, this rich man is saying, still, it's not enough. And, niya, very practical. Saya, shiny ang shoes. Isaya, tibos luton. Ikay, wala inagbakal. Last, we have limited education opportunities. Okay. They say that education is the greatest equalizer. Sige lang, we still have to hold on to that belief, no? Uh, because after all, education can still change our present state of life. Kung subong pigado, okay, hindi pwede nga sa mintras pigado na lang. Education is there to help us at least no, elevate our status in life. Okay, education opportunities for the rich. Okay, so doctor, opportunities for the poor. Uh, could be a lineman, no, sa telephone company or sa, sa electric company. But this is not demeaning them, no. We are just trying to, to, to point out that if people are richer or are rich, they have much higher opportunities, okay. Pero a poor man could also become a doctor by scholarship or paninguha man ino, okay. But of course, it is still not equal na okay social classes and educational inequity social class determines success okay dad can i have a social mobility allowance okay mga para malhasa da yon ang nanay ho social mobility allowance yan naman may ara siya niya cellphone or pwede man siya makalagaw-lagaw may extra siya nga budget or allowance okay so for those with limited income Aduka, budlay gid sin eh, no? Sometimes parents even feel sad for their kids. Balang ako may pangayuon, gani, hindi mahatag. Kaya ting wala man, sang inubakal, no? Okay, technology uh, equalizer or privilege multiplier. I just got this in the internet as well, no? So, it depends on, on us actually if we will believe it or not. But there is truth in it, no? Is technology, in fact, this is even a question, is technology an equalizer or a privilege multiplier. If you have access to technology, what can happen? Okay, damo i, damo man opportunities, na? Okay, but we can also cite some success stories na wala mang gidgani nakatapos or nakatapos man sang certain nga nga, nga degree pero nag-business siya, nag-online selling siya, kag nag-successful. Okay. So, uh, technology, no, can be um, both equalizer and privilege multiplier. That is, if one has access to technology, of course. And, okay, our little boy, first day of school, it makes me want to cry. Yung sinanay, yati happy-happy. Kaya nag-skwela na si Toto, ay si tata, yung ginatanaw, yaya ang balayran. Yeah, I just saw his education cost too. Na, uh, that's why, citing it from the, from the US, if you've noticed, mga skwela sila college, pero maloon sila sa government. Na, for those who will not go to college or to a university education anymore, for men mostly, uh, dua ka bagay, it's either they become YouTubers na, and earn millions of dollars because of their subscribers or they enter the military. How about the Philippines? The same. If you have access to education because of scholarship or your parents can afford to send you to school, 
happy. He can be educated until tertiary. No? But then, uh, that's also the reason why nga kita ang pinakalas nag-adapt sa K-12. For those below who cannot go to college after K-12, they can uh, get certification from PESDA and then they can be qualified for certain jobs. Okay, slavery still exists. Now, slavery still exists. Modern forms of slavery. Modern slavery is closer than we think. They could just be around us. Na? Okay, Africans. Okay, so nablang dead tired at the end of the day for the work and then it's not over because there's work waiting, another work waiting for the next day. Okay, so... Uh, grabe nga labor no gato mas ano doon ila man at tanong may baligya man at nila but these kids are supposed to go to school okay there was a documentary about child labor also ang, ang Philippines Negros particularly about the nadalagid kita dira no inang ang naga ubra sa kampo nga kabataan okay and that's the reason why government came up with this for peace no kay para nga ang kabataan balas ang mga nagapanguma sa kampo sa uma dapat mag-go to school okay so pangtawid pamilya okay but how about in other countries wala na okay so child labor okay slavery in the modern times and child labor minors who are being asked to work and syempre because hindi man sila yung knowledgeable sang ila yung asweldo ila benefits makaubra lang kag may batunon and they are being exploited these kids are deprived of their childhood they're supposed to go to school to play but then unfortunately they are victims of child labor okay so we end our discussion here, the succeeding presentations are actually supplemental readings, no? Supplemental readings of the modern world system theory. Thank you very much.